Okay, uh, good morning everybody. Uh, so, so my name is uh, Mike Baker. I am the uh, sales director at IP Performance. We're based in Bristol. Uh, we're a network security and infrastructure reseller, uh, also a partner of uh, Maru Networks. Um, we have around about 40 university customers and uh, pleased to see there's a lot of familiar faces to, uh, to uh, myself here in the room today. Um, so um, I'll keep my presentation fairly high level before I hand over to the brains of the double act, uh, Henry, um, about halfway through. Um, <clears throat> so what is SDN? Well, it means a lot of things to uh, different people. So perhaps a, an IP address management vendor will have a certain viewpoint on the subject. Uh, this will differ from a switch and router manufacturer and then a, a wireless vendor like Maru will have another story to tell uh, um, as well. So <coughs> SDN, um, it's, um, it's a, an emerging architecture. Hopefully most of you have uh, heard about software defined networking, um, but it's dynamic, manageable, cost effective and adaptable. So it's ideal for the, the high bandwidth networks that we have today which have to carry big data. Uh, the control plane. So most of you probably know this, but um, this, is, this decides how the actual uh, packet, data packets are forwarded. And it's responsible for routing, and functions uh, include system configuration and management. The forwarding plane um, has a number of different names. So you'll also hear the data plane and the user plane. Uh, these all refer to the forwarding plane. And this is what actually moves the packets from the input to the output. Um, it handles multiple conversations through multiple protocols. The management plane is, the, is actually a subset, or considered to be a subset, of the control plane, and it carries the administration traffic. And this describes methods of configuration of the control plane, such as CLI and SNMP. So in conventional networking, the control plane, the forwarding plane, and the management plane, they all tend to reside in the firmware of routers and switches. With SDN, we abstract the forwarding and control planes. We move the control plane from hardware into software. Um, this actually makes um, the, the traffic management more sophisticated than access control lists, lists and routing protocols. So moving the control plane to software allows for dynamic access and administration. So a network administrator can actually shape traffic from the central controller without touching individual switches. The other term that you may come across is NFV, which is Network Function Virtualization. Now, the difference between the two is that NFV was uh, a term um, created by, um, created by um, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, service providers, uh, whereas SDN was actually invented by researchers and uh, data center architects. NFV helped to accelerate service innovation and provision for service providers. But the concept of actually taking the intelligence away from the hardware, moving it to software, is actually the same both in NFV and in SDN. So NFV is not a competitive um, technology or idea to software-defined net networking. It actually goes hand in hand with it. So SDN, as you can see here, has its roots back in 2006 at Stanford University. Ethane, which was developed at Stanford, allowed network managers to define a single network-wide fine-grained policy and enforce it directly. So Ethane coupled simple flow-based switches with the central controller that managed the admittance and routing of flows. In 2008, 
the open flow concept was originated, again at uh, Stanford. So open flow is a communications protocol. It gives access to the forwarding plane of the switch or router over the network. It enables the remote controllers to determine, determine the path of packets through a network of switches. It's an open source development platform for C++ based SDN control applications. So the term SDN was actually born around 2009-2010 and it's part of a history of trying to make networks more programmable. The internet has been successful because it's comprised, as you all know, of seven OSI layers. These can be managed to suit required applications. And then in recent years, SDN is becoming more into the public domain. There have been announcements by Gartner, NEC, Hewlett Packard, and Maru. Henry will talk more about Maru's announcement um, later in the presentation. <clears throat> so what are the goals of software-defined networking? So traditional networks are hard to manage. So by, t by tying the application to the network with the promise of being able to provision network services that adjust traffic flows dynamically, we can improve the end user experience, or in your case, the student experience. <coughs> we can also decrease the OPEX and decrease the CAPEX through the best use of technology. <coughs> Networks also take time to evolve. Therefore, uh, SDN will help to increase the rate of innovation. And finally, because SDN is, open, is based on open standards, there is no vendor lock-in. Okay, so th this is actually my final slide before I hand over to Henry to give him a bit of warning to start hobbling over. Um, so SDN doesn't actually uh, have a, a firm definition. As I said at the beginning, it means different things to different people. But I just wanted to throw a few terms up there for you to consider. The only thing that everyone will tell you, I believe, is that SDN is about separating of the forwarding and control planes. That's the fundamental part of software-defined networking. And by splitting these planes, we can optimize and program each network element. So we centralize what we can, and we distribute what we must therefore simplifying network design. Cloud services has to be a mention of cloud on any slide these days. So users expect on-demand access to applications, infrastructure, and other IT resources. Using SDN, we have common platforms for network and security applications and management integration. And by using standard protocols for interoperability across the vendors, this facilitates integration between this, the physical and virtual layers. This simplifi simplifies network design because instructions are provided by the SDN controllers instead of multiple vendor-specific devices and protocols. So we can broadly apply SDN at just about any place on the network. So data center, core, access, aggregation, branch, campus, and the WAN. Centralizing management is the foundation of both SDN and NFV. We can extract services, for example, uh, DPI, Deep Packet Inspection, Cache, VPN, thereby reducing the number of boxes and simplifying deployment making the network more flexible. Network intelligence. We can centralize in the controller so we can maintain a global view of the network, which appears to applications and policy engines as a single logical entity. 
And finally, by optimising the hardware, we can reduce capex and reduce opex. So with that, I'll hand over to Henry. Obviously, we can take questions right at the end. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much, Mike, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I know a number of people in here, and uh, hopefully you get to know the rest of you soon. I'm Henry Batten. I've worked at Maru for over two years. Um, as the Higher and Further Education Manager, um, looking after universities and colleges, universities prior to that, and I have actually spoken at this rostrum before uh, a couple of years ago. Um, I'm not 100% sure I was keen on being referred to as the brains of the operation. There's a number of people in this room I know who are considerably more intelligent and know this subject m much deeper than I do. Um, and I'm hoping to uh, get to know those guys and uh, learn from them as well. So, leading on from where Mike is, I'm obviously going to turn this more to the wireless bent, and as Mike mentioned, um, every vendor will look at it in a different way. I'm going to sp speak specifically about wireless because it's the bit that Maru is most interested in. Um, however, I suppose the, the, the key thing is we're talking about improving the end user experience. It's what everybody wants to do, it's what end users want, it's what we as users want, is to have the best end user experience. And by trying to move, as these slides try to demonstrate, the complexities of networking away from the black art of CLI and more to looking at what it is an end user needs from where at any given moment, regardless of where that end user is, you should be able to improve their experience. So if you take a standard um, network design here, uh, which is full of multiple components, and this is massively oversimplified to anything that you guys will be used to running, with your tens of thousands of ports across the place, thousands of access points, servers, virtual servers, multiple internet connections, etc. Um, there is a huge amount of config required in there. There's an, it, it's, it's staggering. How, I don't know how you guys do it with, with um, all the different switches and all the different interfaces you have to learn. And you hear a lot, oh, well, we've got a huge investment in this vendor, and we know how this vendor works, so we're kind of going to stick to it, which limits your ability to go best of breed. Mike mentioned there's no vendor lock-in. That's extremely important. So to, to, look at, to look at what it looks like, you have um, lots of CLI, lots of work to do. If you need to configure a new quality of service, you have to go through change requests and worry about it end-to-end because -end, any breakdown in that communication of the quality of service at any point in that network ruins the experience of the end user. So this is what we're all used to. If you then go back to, um, Mike was saying, extracting the control plane, the management plane from away from the forwarding. Forwarding is where packets move at wire speed on switching, and that's, that's where you leave that there. That stays there. However, setting that forwarding plane is done generally in CLI through the management plane and control plane, and is I can make any of these slides available if anyone wants them afterwards, so please just, just let me know. Um, so if you then abstract that... Um, layer by using a standard SDN API, uh, current is one point, OpenFlow 1.3, which is a standard, it is a pan vendor standard, and um, in previous talks before this job I talked about using open standards networking because it, it allows you to move away from any specific vendor lock-in, and, and it holds true more so in, within SDN. So if you think that you're, you're now only dealing with the interface of your SDN controller, um, you only have a single interface to learn. The OpenFlow standard and the API of all of those um, devices on the network will be dealt with by the OpenFlow standard. You don't have to worry about that. So if you then put that into how it would look within a, a, a network, all of those interfaces, routers, Wi-Fi management, switches, end users, you are pulling, pulling all that to an SDN controller. It is an intelligent entity. You can tell software to take actions. The software will take those actions. You can program those actions. So this is the Wi-Fi bit. Um, I'm sort of tacking on at the end a bit here due to time, but the OpenFlow manages it. You set an SDN controller, wired or wireless, the um, SDN controller will manage that traffic flow from the end user within the wireless through to, a, through to the switch and out the other side of it. That's the key thing. You're managing the end user's traffic. You don't have to worry about managing the devices themselves anymore. So unif unified wired and wireless. Gartner brought their magic quadrants together for wired and wireless um, in 2012. That was great for Maru. We got dropped. Of course, there's a bit of trouble that. Why are Gartner dropping you? What's happening to your company? Well, quite rightly, they were saying, if you're looking for a unified infrastructure, you want to make sure that you're, um, you, you, excuse me, if, if you're, you have a, a management 
platform to run it, you want a unified wired and wireless. What they missed was SDN. If you run SDN as your management platform and for looking after all your networks, you don't need multiple platforms. Unification becomes the necessity for having open flow in your switching and open flow in your, in your wireless. So what, what does it bring you? This is, the, this is Maru's kind of first slide that we put together to try and explain why it is that we're investing in, in open flow and investing in SDN. Because in some terms, you could see it as a degradation of our IP. If you're open flow, you don't need to buy our apps. You don't need to buy other things from us. It could depend, potentially decrease what it is that we're trying to sell. But these points are much more important. It's about the end user experience. Um, I talk about end user experience when explaining how Maru does wireless differently. And if anyone wants to be bored about that, please come and see me and I can tell it at great length. So this is the... This is the crux. This is why I'm here. This is why we're talking about it. And it's what you can do with SDN that is the really exciting part of it. This is something we, uh, we have a new version of firmware coming out end of this quarter, um, 1.3, and this is deliverable. We have this. Microsoft have gone from not knowing who Maru is to getting into bed with us in quite a serious way because of our capability to do this. There's other things on our wireless that they really like, but this is, the, this is really interesting. So if you take Microsoft Link 2013, it has two things. It has an SDN API, and it has a live MOS score check. So it knows if, a, if the quality of a call is degrading between two end users anywhere on campus, anywhere within your controlled network. So what it will do is it will port out through the SDN API to, I've put Maru Collaborator in there, but that could be any other uh, SDN-capable um, uh, control device. But it, if it passes the, the fact that this flow from myself to Mike, anywhere on campus, has a degradation in the quality of service. Now, if you were to try and deploy uh, quality of service for that flow through um, CLI, that would take a hell of a long time and be really unpleasant for everybody. So what simply happens is the Microsoft link reports through the API to the collaborator, um, to Maru Collaborator, that there is a degradation in this traffic flow. Maru Collaborator then, on the fly, through OpenFlow and the standards, deploys a quality of service for that link flow um, there and then and fixes the issue anywhere within that network. All you need is SDN-capable switches and an SDN-capable wireless network and the OpenFlow standard. We're doing this. This has been demonstrated. This is another one that will be released at the end of the quarter. Bonjour. I'm sure everyone in here is well aware of the problems that Bonjour calls on a, on a large network due to the fact it's a um, uh, multicast DNS protocol and how it's designed for the home. If you look after your halls of residence, or even more accurately, um, you could be looking after uh, other elements of the network, say, I could be delivering this from an iPad sat over there here if there was an Apple TV associated to the projector. I could do it from sat over there with a microphone. Um, wh what it means is that... Um, when the students log into their halls of residence, for example, they report the Apple um, Bonjour capable devices. SDN then looks at the flows. Anywhere on campus, that student can see his Apple capable devices that are in his dorm room, etc., anywhere. Because OpenFlow and the SDN standard knows that that student has those devices. We're delivering this. Uh, it was, we put it together in conjunction with, I think, the University of Illinois um, in the US. Um, so if you then extract the, that idea further out into the campus, and this, isn't, this now moves into realms of things we're working on and aren't actually delivered. Um, this is being worked on with another large uh, university. If you take halls of residence, for example, one of the biggest bugbears of students that I've heard, um, and it would certainly irritate me, is it's not a home-like experience. Peer-to-peer -peer and you can't do. You would have to have a, a 192.168 network for every single student who has a, a dorm room to allow them to use NAS boxes, smart TVs, and generally behave as though you would do when you're at home. However, if you report those devices in on a logging system at the beginning of the term, for example, SDN can create a mini network for every single one of those students. That's hugely powerful. If you're looking at improving your... Um, um, national Student Survey, if you're looking at giving your students an unequalled um, end user experience where they can be in the library on their iPad, they need to see a video that's um, on their NAS box, they can do that. It just knows, the it just puts the traffic flow across your network controlled within SDN. 
you can then sell additional services to them if they're gamers, opening up specific ports, etc., for for peer-to-peer -peer gaming. So there's lots of other apps here. It's the apps. It's what SDN can do for you that is the most exciting thing. And all I'd say at this moment, other than those who are actually um, working on the forefront of SDN, is just make sure any hardware you buy in the future is SDN capable. Edge switches, particularly core switches. And you will be able to start making use of this. It's going to happen. It's going to happen quickly. Because it, it abstracts the complexities of network management away from those devices and gives you control from an end user level by managing traffic flows. That's me. Thank you very much. Any questions, please do let us know. Um, we'll be on our stands.